Hello and welcome back to the two sisters talking about growing up in the post-war Germany. I'm Heidi Hörnlein and I'm living in Italy Why there is my sister, Marianne ex Hörnlein. <laughs> Yeah, Marianne West, and I'm living in San Diego, California. Hmm, wait, are we in warmer climates? <laughs> yeah, that's one of the reasons, you know, why we went. You, you, you did it more effectively. You went in a place which is a little bit warmer than Italy, because Italy is warm in summer, but not so much in winter. Anyway. Well, it's cold right now here, too. And, yeah. and I think so, what you have in Italy, too, I mean, I don't know for sure, but here in San Diego, also all the houses are not built for any kind of cold weather. Mm -hmm. So when it gets, you know, even, let's say, in Celsius, 10 Celsius, or if it gets to be like 50 Fahrenheit, we are freezing our butts off because mm -hmm. you can't keep the house warm. Yeah, yeah. And we should <laughs> you know, say that we are meeting now on the 10th of February, which actually would have been the 98th birthday of our mother. Yeah, yeah, I was wow. thinking about it, that it's her birthday. Yeah, and it's sort of celebrating what we are doing here now for, yeah. for her birthday. So we have already done two uh, episodes, and we are speaking in English. Doesn't mean that we don't know German anymore. We, we, oh, really? You yeah, mean? I think we do. <laughs> but as Mariana has a podcast in English, and I have a, a podcast mainly in English, the video mm. series, so we try to do the things in English. You are, for you, it's more easy. You are living in an yeah. English-speaking country. For me, I get sometimes completely, completely confused, especially after Mark, my American husband, has died. So I don't have the continuous practice anymore. And I have nobody to ask, you know. Sometimes you just don't know how you say in English. And right. before I could just ask, now I have to try to explain it, it somehow. <laughs> Yeah, get the get the old dictionary out. <laughs> sort of. The, yeah. the good thing is, I mean, even for me, say so the dictionaries now have pronunciation because a lot of the words I learned in English I learned by reading, and mm -hmm. the way I pronounce it in my head is not the way people pronounce it <laughs> in, in real life. So a lot of time I get to like, oh, what is what that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so, we are all one people. <laughs> yeah, we have already done two episodes about our childhood in, in Germany. The last one I remember, we were uh, focusing on our aunts somehow, you know. <laughs> and yeah, and, and actually, that one we are going to explore more too, hopefully, yeah. with our brothers. With our brothers, yeah. And I thought. Aunt. Yeah, this time to, to talk a little bit about the education. I mean, about schooling and all that stuff and uh, our experience there. We had quite different experiences, uh, but not yeah. only our personal Heidi was an A student and yeah, sort I of. was not. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's uh, the part of that. Uh, mm -hmm. it, just the school system is completely different. Probably now it's even diff much different than it was then. Um, than it is in America. So oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So I thought it might be interesting uh, to talk about that and have people understand a little bit how things work differently in other countries. You know. So yeah, for sure, for sure. Oh, I should. Well, have... yeah, and you know, and if we bring modern days in, like I homeschooled my own children, which is not possible in Germany. So yeah. you yeah. know, but yeah, definitely. So, where do you want to start? <laughs> I wanted to start when I went, I should have taken out the photo, but I would post it then uh, somehow in, in the blog post I will write about this uh, uh, episode. When I went to school, we had this big Zuckertüte, the big ah, uh, yes, sort of... How would you I tell everyone it? about the sugar tude. It's a cone made out of uh, hard, out of cardboard, yeah, basically. Cardboard. And it's decorated with very pretty type of, you know, sometimes foils, sometimes pictures, but it's super pretty. And then there is like a crepe, if I remember right, but like some more flexible top where you actually can close this up and then tie a bow around it. 
And those cones come in all kinds of sizes, including a size as big as a child, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which we didn't get that size. <laughs> yeah, and the sense of these cones is that there is something nice inside, some, some gift yeah. for the child for the first yeah. cooling day, no? Yeah. And we don't know yet before what there will be in. We can, uh, we will see it after the schooling day. And then we go yeah. proudly along uh, with this uh, cone. And I have in my mind the memory of this picture where I have the cone and you were tiny. Uh, yeah. Standing nearby and looking like a sweet little girl. <laughs> well, what do you mean? I was a sweet little girl. Yes, I were. just you look were. like one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm and trying to get my thing a little bit higher to get a little bit better. Yeah, it gets, um, gets seasick. <laughs> yeah, <good. laughs> sorry. Sorry if you're watching it. <laughs> seasick while watching videos. Yeah, and on yeah. this time, in this time, our mother was, she had a psychological problem, let's say, no? She, she was in bed and I think she had the, the half of the paralysis of her face with my yeah i don't know time. anything about that i mean yeah. i know said i know that we were always said well let's put it this way i i i know that our mom always took a lot of pills mm -hmm. and we were kind of i remember her heart not being good yeah. so that was like the reason later that was later and then Mm -hmm. Well, actually, Hina was later at one point saying, you know, once he had become a doctor and everything and had looked at her pills, that they all were more anxiety reducing medication. Mm -hmm. And, you know, our mom lived to be 89 years old. And he was saying that somebody with a weak heart is not going to live 89. So, I mean, right there, just from our memory, it's, it's something that mental health or problems with mental health were definitely some you don't talk about. So, yeah. you know, yeah, stress and whatever. And I think maybe we have already talked about that. And, you know, we will come right back to the school in a second. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, for somebody who grew up like our mom, where she basically had servants in her growing up, she never had to clean dishes or do stuff like that. And you know, live in in kind of an upper crust type of uh, situation, and then the war came, and she had to do you know all this learn. They had to do this household year and learn how to do all that stuff, and then the war is over, and she ends up with five kids and being scrubbing and cleaning and cooking and doing all of that all day, and probably to set standards she had ingrained with her when you know you had I don't know how many servants they had you know mm -hmm. or yeah. but you know it's it's like I would have a nervous breakdown yeah. I, you know and you need also know to know that in Coburg the Nazi uh, ideology Coburg is the place where we were born was Coburg was the first city to have a Nazi uh, mayor so practically the whole childhood they already lived in this atmosphere of that thought uh, system and also you know they saw then people disappear and as a young person it's difficult to reconcile it so i i do think that has also to do with the, the problems people had because you know you understand somehow that something is not right but you have no way to to to, to say anything or to get it right inside of yourself well, that's that's an assumption we don't really, you know, yeah. I mean, we don't know. That's something we can assume either that the children were fed the ideology and believed it, and then they were faced with, whoa, you know, because I, I can only speak for myself, but I feel I was born effectively 12 years after the end of the war, right? Mm -hmm. And was raised with incredible feeling of guilt towards what we, which... It wasn't me because I wasn't even a thought, <laughs> you know, but what we did as a collective, yes. you know, and so for somebody who actually was part of it, was lived through it, I think it's an incredible psychological burden, uh, yeah. you know. Exactly, so, exactly. And that we're talking about 
<laughs> yeah, and then I know that our mother first she she see she wanted a lot of kids, and then she said, after two it was already enough, you know, and uh, yeah. she. And, and she couldn't somehow not stop getting pregnant. So with me, I was there and I came to school and you were one year old or two years old or something when I went to school. Yeah, because I went with seven. And so she, she, she felt completely overwhelmed, I think. Anyway, yeah. why I say that is on the day of my school, uh, first day of my school, that's where you are so proud because now you, you are... Big, yeah, big. You know, you're not the small <laughs> one anymore, but now you can go to school and you sort of count somehow. And she couldn't come because she was in bed. So I went with Tante Henny. She, at least Tante Henny, not Tante Erika. And <laughs> <laughs> we talked about Tante Erika last time. So maybe if you want to see what that is about, yeah. watch the last episode. So Tante Henny was always very nice and very vibrant yeah. and she yeah. can talk a lot. Yeah, yeah. And that was, I somehow <laughs> was glad that she was with me. But it's also sad when everybody else has the mother with them. And my yeah. mother was not. So that's why I brought it up because that was yeah. my first day in school. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even know. So what, mm -hmm. what had happened? She had paralysis? So she had the facial, facial paralysis, that the half of face was, was paralysed. So, mm -hmm. you know. Interesting. So, yeah. you know, if we, if we think back, like some similar happened to, to Hinner, not his face, but how he had this pain, which then later turned out to be psychological cause. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I feel like stress and overwhelm does a lot. I mean, we don't know, obviously. We're not doctors. We weren't there with a diagnosis. We don't have any medical whatever. And we don't know what at that time would have diagnosed because, you know, our knowledge, our medicine, everything has come a long way since those dark, dark days when the dinosaur <laughs> roamed <laughs> yeah. and we were kids. <laughs> yeah, and these days, um, with you being born, the, the financial situation in the family went a little bit better. Not because you are born, but because it was oh. co coincidence. <laughs> Not because of me. What are you saying? Everything is about me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so uh, it went a little better. But our first uh, oldest brother, he really lived, I would almost say poverty, you know. We, oh, for sure. Yeah. I, I think everyone in Germany did. Because, yeah, yeah. you know, basically, I'm pretty sure, I mean, we have to check our historical facts. But I'm pretty sure that the first year after the war, there was a little bit of the notion of allied forces to just let everyone go to, to heck, you know, because Germany had caused two wars and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, and then it took a long time for things to get like better, you know, mm -hmm. that the allied forces decided that it might be a bad idea, which now... You know, I mean, still, world politics is so crazy, but I think most everyone has realized if you push people too much into um, poverty and into not doing well, it just leads to violence. You know? And listen about a lot of podcasts, podcasts, but you know, I've listened to quite a few historical podcasts, which kind of say said the cause that we even had the second world war is that Germans were not allowed to recover after the first world war and people were suffering you know and here was this person coming along promising your children will eat you know and if you're a parent you know that if your children are suffering that's the worst thing in the world you will do anything for your kids to you know have food in their mouths and to, to feel well and all of that stuff, you know? Yeah. So, and, and, and I think we can definitely say they lived in poverty because I don't know if you remember the stories that they were patrolling the garden. Yeah. Uh, our dad and I think our uncle who was yeah. still living there yeah. Yeah. because people would come at night and steal the food in the garden and that was what they were living off, you know? That was, that was their, their livelihood. 
And I remember some story about a dog. They even got <laughs> it was like a vicious dog. Now, no, I don't know much about it. Just no. said, what I remember, he, the dog was not vicious, but they didn't know how to have a dog. They thought when he, they put them in a little cage, then he would take care for the whole garden. When the, the, so they had no idea how to, how to, what a dog needs and what the dog could do. So they sort of put him in a too small box and then they were you know astonished that neither he chased away the 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 thieves and that he became a little bit aggressive i mean everybody oh. would be aggressive when you are put in two put for two meters box you know so yeah yeah that, <laughs> definitely yeah i just you know i mean i know that we really didn't have pets growing up until much later until basically yeah. you were a were you still at home when we got married? Yeah, yeah. That Wolfgang uh, got it for his, I think, eighth birthday or something. I, well, I think Kina brought her home. Yeah, yeah. Hina but for, for Wolfgang, he gave uh, gave okay. it as a birthday gift to Wolfgang. So yeah. yeah, yeah. I still was for two or three years. I think I still was at home. So okay, mm -hmm. okay. So back to your to big school. big cone. Filled with what was in there? Do you remember what I, was I, I don't remember. I don't remember. <clears throat> but I remember that I was very proud to go to school. We were boys and girls mixed. And it was about... What? Yes. In the Heiligkreuzschule. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had two different entrances for boys and girls still when yeah, I went there. entrances. But in our class, there were boys and girls mixed. No. Yeah, I have photos. Do you believe that? <laughs> well... I, we didn't have boys until third grade or second grade or something, because I'm, I remember I'm, we were all girls, and I actually remember said we were going to have boys in our class, and I was so either excited or compumulated or something that I went to school and I forgot my runs and my school bag at home. <laughs> because it was like such a big event, and it was either second or third grade. Yeah, I, I remember. I remember that I have seen the photos from first grade with uh, Lera Bender in the back, and I remember that there were boys. But I have to look it up. Uh, you get me into doubt. But I yeah. think I have always been with boys in school, in secondary school for sure. But, well, you know. yeah, I'm, but uh, you know, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, when, once we were in gymnasium and stuff, but I do remember is that we were separated, said girls and boys had different entrances. Yeah, that's I remember too. We yeah. had different uh, places in, in the break, whereas the girls were in one part of the, so we called it Pausehof. So it was basically mm -hmm. not really a playground because it was uh, tarred, you know, it was like blacktop. But the girls had one side where they were playing and the boys were playing on the other side. And then later, I'm, I don't remember if that changed, if we came together, but I'm pretty sure the entrances then were later said you could go in whichever. And, but I, I distinctly remember forgetting my, my school bag at home because I was just so compumulated that we were going to get boys. Wow, and boys. That it was like, <laughs> that it was like a new thing. And then I also remember that the boys still got spanked or at least got their fingers hit or something. Or not, they got an orfeigen from, I remember Frau Schneider, who was like a, a big person with force. <laughs> <laughs> said she would dish out like, what's orfeigen in English? Um, when you hit the, yeah. you hit the, the face like this, ouch. Um, I don't remember the English word now either. I'm sure there's there's a word. To <laughs> I think you forget that. What, 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. it's highly illegal now, which is good. I don't think hitting anybody brings, yeah. you know, positive results. Yeah, I will look up the photo. I, I do remember that. But I, I'm just thinking, I have immediately going the thoughts of maybe my generation was not enough girls and boys to make separate classes. 
That's what well, I... Or maybe you remember gymnasium, your first... first who who knows? The memories are a long time ago. I will look it up and... Uh, yeah. look. And as we know, memories are not very reliable anyways. Mm, so, not too much, you know? no. no. So I might have a false memory set too. Okay, I like and to I go to school. Um, and... Uh, on the, where the entrance of the school was, the street, on the other side was a little shop. Uh, what? I, yeah, I've forgotten how it was called. You could buy like uh, mm, sandwiches there, not a bakery. You could buy and also school things. And I always bought stickers, you know, little pictures and things like that. And I remember that what must have been my second year or so, or maybe third. No, I was quite small still. That then the woman, the, the shopkeeper, obviously told my mother that I had always 10 pfennig or 5 pfennig or say, every day I bought a little bit. Or, you know, this gum, uh, the gum. What, was it the one by the school or the one at the end of the White Houses? No, 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 by the school, the front of the school. And maybe it was not there anymore when you were there. I don't know. Anyway, this woman told my mother that I was always in supply of money. Not much, but, you know, a little bit. And then they found out that I took some little coins out of my mother's uh, uh, um, purse. Oh, and then oh, I got really... Oh, <laughs> the only time and uh, which I really got hit badly. And I remember that mother told our father that he had to hit me. And it was always the man's job to hit the children. And I really do think he didn't like it a whole lot. But mm -hmm. mother uh, commanded what has to happen in, uh, in the family, you know? And so, uh, yeah, I think it was the only time I really get badly hit. And then, uh, then it stopped, so. So have you been stealing ever since? No, actually, um, not really. Uh, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> it worked, yeah, it worked. Yeah, but it was sort of devastating at the same time because I really do, I might have felt that it, father didn't want to do it, you know, but he had to. So, and I could imagine this old stories. I now think out that, that he stopped then. I, I don't know if you ever get a, got a real... Yeah, uh, I, got, I got spanked. You, you too. So yeah. I don't know what your impression was about him. I thought he didn't like it. But. Well, I I just, you know, I mean, I I remember not so much, you know, it hurting or anything, just being scared and thinking it's unfair, you mm -hmm. know. And I I don't see it as a positive, you know, like, oh, you know, he told me a lesson or anything like that. And what was the occasion um, for you? So I must have been around six or seven too, mm -hmm. like young. And when, when, I don't know how it is in Italy, but here in the US, when you're a little like that, you cannot roam the streets. I mean, your parents go to jail now. If you, ha if you had like a, a six-year-old playing, you know, two blocks away from your house, then it would be considered child neglect here. You know, it, it's just not happening. But when we were little, after we were done with lunch, which was the main meal in Germany, you go play and you go down and play in the street and you play with the neighborhood kids and you pretty much roam the neighborhood, you know, like you, you would go pretty far. And so when you play, you get dirty mostly, <laughs> most often. <laughs> Because it involves dirt and all kinds of stuff, right? And so uh, maybe from American standard, I would say like a block and a half away or so, there, there was what we called the Suk building. So our hometown had a lot of old buildings. Our, do you remember when Coburg was mentioned first? It was like, what, 900 BC, like... You know, it's an old, old town with old castles and old houses. And the house we grew up in uh, was built in 18, what, 70, something no, like 90, that? No, 90, 90, about 18, so 90. 90 mm -hmm. still, you know, along. I mean, it was an old house even then when, when we grew up. 
and so this house was kind of a newish building. It was built like square and it had big windows and stuff like that. And they had a kitchen. And I don't quite remember if they, I know they were teaching cooking classes there. So I don't know all the background, if they were also selling some stuff or it, if it was a, a community thing or whatever. But our mom was there doing a cooking class and I think we were very curious. And I wanted to do somewhere I needed to ask permission or I thought I needed to ask permission. So me and a gang of little other dirty kids marched there and walked into the place where she was doing the cooking class with all these other proper ladies. And, you know, and asked, and they all said we were cute, and they gave us something to eat. And my mom, our mom, was deadly embarrassed about this dirty child <laughs> leading another group of dirty children. And it was probably, you know, like looking back after having been a mom with very little free time, you know, that was probably the one thing she was doing for herself. And here comes this dirty little urchin. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I got spanked for that one. Oh yeah, yeah that is that is heavy. That, that's that not was really. A prime. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I mean stealing is one thing, but coming in dirty, I, I don't think it is justified. Anyway. Well, I th I think it was really the fact that I embarrassed her. That mm -hmm. you know, I mean, that I didn't respect boundaries. That I would go into this class. I, you know, looking back, I'm like, man, I had a lot of self-confidence. They probably beat it out of me because I can't say that I really had, you know, high self-confidence later in life for many, you know, many occasions, many years and stuff like yeah. that. But who knows? Maybe yeah. light going off. <laughs> you know, you're being self-confident. You get the shit beaten out. Oops. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, you can even <laughs> anyway yeah i don't think that people beat anymore i do think it's good to have boundaries and to transmit boundaries but not necessarily by being violent no that was really not no, a good thing and, but it was normal I, in germany it was just normal nobody thought about oh, it and it's it's still normal in a lot of countries you know mm -hmm. since i'm like deep into the steam universe the steam universe uh I get to read things of people from all over the world and have conversations. And there are a lot of African countries where they mm -hmm. still use what we call the Klopfpeitsche. Mm -hmm. And now I forgot the, the English name too, but it's basically a stick with leather strips on it. And it's used to, to hit people. And mm -hmm. I mean, I remember that thing hanging at the door frame to, to the pantry, you know? So it's definitely some... I saw on a regular basis, you know, and I believe our brothers got hit with that thing. More and than so we did. Th there's still societies where it's like you do one thing out of line and you get beaten up bad, you know, beaten to the point where, where you really get hurt and stuff. And yeah. I just feel that doesn't lead to anything good whatsoever, you know, because I mean, it's a long time ago, my own getting beaten, but I, if I have an association, if you ask me what are you associating in your memory with it, it's anger, embarrassment, and uh, resentment. Yeah. There, there is no remorse in there. There is no whatever. There is more this like, you guys suck, and this wasn't right, you know? So it wasn't, you know... On an emotional level, it wasn't me taking in, oh, I should have given mom space and blah, blah, blah. You know, it was like, you guys beat me up and, you know, and I didn't do anything. <laughs> you know what mm. I mean? Yeah, you were always more, uh, how do you say, more rebellious than I. I always tried to, to more or less adapt myself. And I remember this experience being beaten like humiliating. Deeply yeah, it's humiliating. humiliating. Yeah. And it's not teaching a lesson. It's like you, yeah, know. you said before it was teaching me not to steal anymore. Maybe well, it's true, no, maybe it's it just not. scared the heck out of you. So yeah. you know, I mean a, a six year old doesn't understand that taking, you know, money out of her purse is not okay, right? 
So you might not have done it anymore, but you know, maybe because out of fear of punishment. And to me, if you do, if you, if the only, if the reason you don't do something is because you fear punishment, then you're not really understanding why it's not a good idea to do so. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you could have understood or let's say as a parent now, you know, I, you, you have a conversation with a child and you say, okay, so you want to buy things, you can earn money. And then you said task to make the kid understand money is not that easy to come by, or I mean, there are different sorts about that mindset thing and whatever, but it's like, let's say you put the mindset, you want this, so you do X for it, which does not include stealing. It includes, you know, doing a job, doing whatever, and then you get the satisfaction of having said money, and then you can spend it, you know, yeah. and, and then you have turned it into a positive teaching experience, you know, whatever. I mean, it's, it's different times, and people... You know, having been a parent, you, you always make mistakes because we're all human and, and there are times, you know, and I think at the time, like you said, uh, corporal punishment was part of the idea of how you educate people. Yeah. And, yeah. You know what I wanted to, to in, in, insert here, that the main educational, the book for education until the 17th was still printed the education of the third reich and that was oh, really the, yes the main guideline when oh. when they were taught don't uh, take it kids uh, babies when they cry let them alone and all this stuff had been taught to mothers in that time you know right. and even very long i mean it took a long time to to realize that that was not <laughs> The but, right you know, education. <laughs> this thing is like really great. And, and you, I have always read Alice Miller who, who got into, you know, how people turn out to be what, what we consider monsters, you know, or like people which are just doing really awful things in the world. And she kind of cites that this kind of abandonment is as for what I consider abandonment of children, you know. It's like a, a major event in just about every person's life who later became kind of cray cray and, and um, you know, yeah. dictators and people which have done really terrible things on a, on a very widespread level. I wouldn't it, say abandonment alone is enough. I think it's really also mistreating. It is uh, yeah. abusing, abuse. Uh, in many ways, you know, and there is sexual abuse, but there is also psychological abuse and abandonment is one part, you know, it's also an abuse of, um, how to say, not giving safety to, to, uh, to the child, but there are many ways of ab abuse. And I'm happy, at least as far as I know, we haven't been sexually abused. We have a little bit. As been, far as I know. Too, yeah, so, but, and but, that is almost like a miracle because <laughs> the more you, I mean, it's seriously like, uh, I think it's kind of worldwide right now. It's a Me Too movement. And it's just astounding how many women have experienced sexual violence in their life and often as very young children where nobody believed them. And yeah, I mean, I know that when it's I still had my... going on, by the way, it's still going on. Oh, of course world. it's still yeah. going on. It's, 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 uh, I just listened to, to a discussion on that where, uh, the person was saying, as long as it's looked upon as a, a women issue, it's not going to go away because it really is a men issue. You know, I said, as long as we're still raising little boys and, and men who think that it's okay to act in that way, you know, whatever it is, the uh, cat calling, the, uh, oh, a boy is a boy, or, you know, just being more lenient towards certain behaviors or whatever, um, you know, um, then it's, it's not going to go away. But at least we're talking about it and yeah. it's not a shameful secret, so to speak, you know, and yeah. uh, hopefully 
yeah. So I want, to, I want to add something. I think it's really not a, a women's issue alone. It's also many men get abused and especially children. I mean, yes. when we are women, adult people, we can say no. But children can't. Children are just closed into this uh, dependency. They have no way to, even if their own parents uh, do things like that or sell them to, I, I lately saw Anneke Lucas. You can Google her on YouTube. She was a sex slave when, between age six and 11. Oh, and, I mean, it's, yeah, her mother uh, sold her, you know, and she hardly survived. And it was a horrible experience. And I got so so uh, touched by that I, I had a, when i went into that listen more about these things i really had a bad time because realizing how that is still working and it's still covered up uh, oh, yeah, yeah. but i wanted like, to say at least that we personally i don't yeah. think we had that i don't think so either yeah. and yeah. i i would think between the two of us if it would happen one of us would have at least a little bit of a memory because I, I think that's what happens a lot, that there is a suppression of memory, you know? So, I mean, in many ways, whatever mistakes our parents have made, they have really tried to be very conscientious and yeah. good parents and, you know, and give us the best start they were able to to think about and, and give and stuff. So Yeah, 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 uh, for sure. And what I think, for instance, if it, the, the normal thing when, when you are traumatized as a child, you don't remember anything of that time, you know? Right. And I do remember quite a lot. So I don't think I had the need to, to push that away. So. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I only remember things where I actually have photos in a photo album. But then mm -hmm. I also feel, you know, said... I have done a lot in my life, you know, like a lot of different experience, a lot of different things, blah, 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 blah. So like your memory banks fill up and have to throw some stuff out, you know? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. that could definitely be, be something because like I come back to, to our hometown and people go like, oh, remember when we did this and this? And it's like, no, I don't. But then you have lived in this town your whole life and seen the same people and you know, like the horizon has just been a lot smaller. So no, I'm not, I'm... you know, not that I want to brag that I'm mm -hmm. such a world citizen and I'm not, you know, I haven't been to every country in the world and blah, blah, blah. But relatively speaking, I have done a lot of different things. And I remember know. actually a lot also of my f primary school friends where I went and met them. And I really, I'm glad we were free to go to school then by ourselves and had some free time to go somewhere, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Secrets are coming out because, okay, you know, like you were always, I did not know what you're up to. And, you know, you were just, uh, Heidi is a good one and she, is a smart one and she's a student and blah 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 so and I guess being five years younger I was just of a different generation at that point you oh, know, right. because, yeah and I had to protect you for instance when you went somewhere and it was dark in the evening they sent me to to bring your home safe you know and five years older when I was 10 and you were or oh, let's say 12 and you were seven um, it's not really a good protection, but I remember that and I was frightened myself at night, you know? Yeah, I'm still frightened at night. So I must have had my own fear and then I took yours on too. So it became double, double fear of the time. Yeah. No, what I wanted to say in our family, practically uh, every bigger sibling had then to take care for the bigger, older, uh, to take care for the younger one. And that was definitely an overwhelm. No, well, I think that happens so in most larger families because yeah, yeah. parents can't, you know, can't do that. And so let's go back to school. Yeah. Okay, uh, back to school we go. Yeah, four years primary school, and uh, mine I was changed the teacher almost every year. I remember two. Yeah, I think there was normal sense that you had mm -hmm. a different teacher, every but year. only one teacher uh, the whole whole day. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. You had like a first grade teacher who would teach. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I think we had a handicraft teacher. 
yeah, it was extra. And that's what I want to come to. I'm so glad that I learned this stuff because I oh, see me today too. nobody knows anymore anything about how to put a, a button on, on the shirt or how to, to mend the sock. N nobody knows that anymore. And Not we, that I like mending socks. But... No, that's a different <laughs> thing. But at least you don't have to throw things away immediately. Um, but our society is in, about throwing away and buying new stuff. But I, it's still, I don't like it. I want to keep stuff and, 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 and not waste things. And that might have been also the situation of, let's say, poverty after the... After well, the I, I think it was uh, not so much poverty. It was just in the society as a whole there, which just wasn't that much available. So you used everything over and over again. And, you know, and really part of my whole purpose of the Sustainable Living podcast is that we need to get back to that because we are filling up every piece available with landfills. We are having incredible amounts of waste of resources and just trashing it. And I just, and since we're talking about mending socks, you know, I mm -hmm. just did a podcast with a guy who is into sustainable clothing and whatever. And in the States, at least 85% of the clothing people discard gets thrown away. And if that would be recycled, the impact would be bigger than to recycle all cans and all class, you know, all beverage, which is different in Europe too, because there you, you have class usually with, uh, uh, you give it back to the, to the brewery or the place and it gets in, in, in Germany, not in Italy. Oh, but. okay. Well, in the US, everything gets, you know, basically either recycled if people put it in the recycle mm -hmm. and, you know, or uh, so in a way. But when we were little, I remember having a milk can. You go to the milk store and it gets filled and you have a container for your eggs, you know, and they put, put them in there and you have your own bag. I mean, you, you never would go to the store and expect them to give you a bag. No. You know, it's like, no. You, and, you know, I remember uh, school. It's the first day we would get the books issued from the school. Yeah. And then you go home and you wrap them in this really strong paper so they stay nice. And then, you know, and you had to put your name in there. So if you made them dirty, they knew <laughs> who made them dirty, right? And, and you just took care of those things. So Yeah, and know. next year, the next person of that class uh, would get your book, you know? Right, right. Yeah. So yeah. It, it was like a continuum instead yeah. of like one use of, of everything, yeah. you know? So that was actually like, to me, like a big deal when we got the books and then we would all get together and, and wrap our books, you know, and learn how to fold the edges just right and all of that, you know. Yeah, I remember that too. Uh -huh. yeah. Get the labels on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. what else do you remember so, about highly coaching? Just, to, just to, to say, with your ideas, you are ketzerisch. How do you say that in English? You are, um, because you are against economy. You are against the, the whole system when you, when you preach that people shouldn't consume, you know, because it's, everything is now based on consumism. And uh, that's really, I, I find it horrible. But, uh, you know, I feel there are more and more uh, consumers, which, uh, well, at least here, we are really not manufacturing that much in this country. So a lot of it is service industry now. Mm -hmm. And so, and even with, with children and, and giving gifts to children, a lot of that is now, a lot of people say, instead of giving gifts, let's give experiences. So mm -hmm. instead of buying you another toy, which becomes boring after three times playing with it, let's go to the movies together or let me take out for lunch or, you know, stuff like that. And I feel there are definitely companies which are reacting to this because like when you were say darning socks, I mean, I do remember darning day and, you know, there's a big thing of socks because socks always get holes, you know. And then everybody sits around and darns and we had this little wooden thing you, you push into the sock because usually it's a, it's a heel. Yeah. 
that's the first it was thing a fungus uh, a mush sort of mushroom you know yeah it, like it a was, uh, handle yeah, that little <laughs> handle and you push it into the sock so you don't make it too tight so it's still formed towards the heel and you create this whole new um heel you know you're not just pulling the whole together you're basically creating new fabric to, mm -hmm. to use the mm -hmm. thing so so for example here is now a company where you buy your socks and i haven't really looked at how expensive they are or whatever but you get a lifetime guarantee so they darn them for you if you oh. get <laughs> i'm sorry so uh -huh. <laughs> yeah if you get holes you send them back and they fix them Oh, wow. And I thought that's very cool because I definitely remember not liking darning dogs, uh, <laughs> dogs, <laughs> socks. <laughs> that was just not a really fun experience. At all. Yeah, but at least we are able to do that because yes. we learned it at school, and that's it's it's well, it's, and at home. That's like when we talked yeah, about true. the aunts, you know, that was yeah. like because Tante Mayana was a uh, uh, handy. How do you say handicrafted? Handic yeah, like arts or crafts. I don't know what you would exactly call it. Stitching call it and uh, knitting and whatever. Crochet and embroidery yeah. and mm -hmm. sewing. We learned sewing. Yeah. So now continue with the school. I remember, I think it was the third class, second or third class, the, the Mr. Walter went around uh, the classes and talked about singing. There is a singing school. Oh, and I was interested and I went there and I first was in the pre-class and then I was in the next class. And I think within a year, I was in the, in the in, oh, maximum two, I was in the last class where you even did concerts. And that was, I think it was the beginning of my loving um, singing and music because at home, oh, sure. our father always said uh, he sings loudly uh, lo lo longly and wrongly, as a long, loud, and falsch. <laughs> <laughs> and our mother, I never heard her sing. She never opened her mouth. So we were definitely not a musical household, you know? Well, musical in a sense that we had music playing. I mean, playing, our parents yeah. listened to operas and, yeah, you that's know, true. That's and true. Gone, yeah but not yeah. in doing it. So that's then, that was the beginning of my engagement with choirs and the whole time. I mean, even later. You never went to sing, singing school, did you? <gasps> you probably had to pick me up there at, at night, yeah. yeah I, I went when I was very little. It was like the preschool, like where we did like rhythmic stuff and things. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I do remember that they were kind of saying that I sing like a bear. And I never had your sense of, I'm more like our dad that I can sing quite wrongly. But I was, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can look at, you know, I used to love to sing. And some, I think I got depressed at one point and I stopped singing. Because I used to like do housework or whatever. And I would sing, sing, sing. And then someone that stopped. And that was, and now I feel my voice is like, kind of teeny you know like if you don't if you don't keep practicing you yeah, kind of sure. lose it yeah. but yeah no i was in in the bach core oh yeah and, after yeah. me then when i was already away probably yeah mm -hmm. and i would you know and what was before consider what was what was Kantorei. 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 i was mm -hmm. yeah i did the whole all, all, oh, yeah. all through Good to then, know. I, I wasn't aware of that. Mm -hmm. Then here, I was singing in the German choirs, which, mm -hmm. you know, it's mostly, it's not really great voices. But I find myself, I can, you know, open a songbook and I see the notes going down and my voice wants to go up. You know, I like, <laughs> I don't, I'm sure you look at notes and there is an association in your mind yeah. what that should sound like. More and less, I yeah. need to hear it, you know, like if I, I still play recorder a little bit. I don't have a piano in the house at all. But I, if I play things on the recorder a few times, you know, then I can sing it. But I really have to learn it, you know, to make it like a muscle memory again or however you want to call it. 
Now we go to the secondary school, and I remember you did an instrument, piano or what? And yeah, no. mm -hmm. yeah, and I did cello, but you had it as an obligatory because there were different branches on the secondary school. I went mm -hmm. to the humanistic branch, and you went to the artistic, or music. was it musical, or what was it? Yeah, music. Well, it's humanistic, I guess. Like the the emphasis was like uh, art, music. Mm -hmm. German, I think, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. yeah. And, and and yours was like, uh, you had like... Latin. 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 Well, you had Latin too, but you had Greek. I didn't take Greek. I could choose between Greek and French, and so I chose French. We had first Latin, we started with Latin for two or three years, then English, and then um, or French or Greek. And yeah, so we had, we had Latin and English, but then mm -hmm. the other emphasis was music and mm -hmm. art. Yeah, and we had to have three, uh, three languages. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And then so there were, in our city, were other two schools. We went to a school which was mixed, boys and girls together. But mm -hmm. in our school, I don't know if yours, there was a separation between Protestant. One class was Protestant and the other class was with the Catholics. I don't know. Oh, if we just. Um, I think we just went separate ways during religion class, uh -huh. and then later I choose mm -hmm. ethic instead of religion because yeah, that my was class not was there yet. Uh, we yeah. didn't have ethics instead of religion yet. We had to to be in the religion class. So yeah, so and our class was very small. We were only like twelve kids oh, or wow. something like yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There were like three, there was A, B, and C, and I was in C, and mm -hmm. we had just like 12, 13 kids, something like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. yeah, we were about 20, 24, and it was obligatory up to a certain point, and we had a religion teacher, he was really... No, Suchland was the Latin teacher, how was the... Latin teacher also. He, he uh, at the beginning, the first words I learned in Latin, I was so proud. And the, I think the first year was also good. But then when this teacher, the, he sort of destructed the whole enthusiasm about the language. That's you know, it's, it's really, like really <laughs> interesting how a teacher can make such a difference if you, exactly. if you love a subject and, and excel or if you just end up hating it and not even getting there. But know? it can also be dangerous, as in my case. I loved uh, the mathematic teacher, mathematic and physics. And I really did like that. And I thought I would be gifted. And then I went to university to study that. And it was not really what I was. So the, a good teacher can also ignite you for something which then maybe at the long run is not exactly what, you know, <laughs> what it is. So, yeah, but at least you, you have a good fundamental understanding. Mm -hmm. You know, I, yeah. I feel, <clears throat> uh, you know, you're fairly young by the time people go to, to university. And sometimes it's hard to really know what it is we are, we are going for. Yeah, I was 20 when I went to university. I was not so young. I think today people are younger to go to university, but I never knew what I really wanted to do. I mean, more or less until today. I do a lot of things, but it's nothing really what I, ah, I, I live for. I thought <laughs> singing was that for you. Said yeah, you for a while, to... yeah. Singing is nice, but also there, you know, it's, it's good. I like it. But it's not, I now don't sing anymore, and it's not that I'm missing it. So if it was the real life passion, you know, as I had some friends, they couldn't stay without, you know. And every concert, I, they were happy for three weeks or so, you know. <laughs> maybe that's a little bit, uh, I don't know. I mean, that would be something to explore, because I feel I'm the same way. Mm -hmm. uh, said I have a lot of talents. I've done a lot of things. There are a lot of things I love. I think, um, you know, I feel right now, and this is not talking about our upbringing at all, but in a way it is. In a way it a, is, I think. It's a result yeah. of it. Yeah. So like this year, I have declared for myself to figure out what it is I want. And that <laughs> sounds weird because I feel 
I mean, I'm, I have done a lot of things where I say, yes, I want to do that. But then as I dig deeper, I go, is it really what I wanted or is it what I felt I have to do? You know, I'm obligated to the world, to, to whatever. It's my duty, you know, even with a sustainable uh, living podcast, you know, I have kind of pulled back a little bit for many reasons. I mean, one is that our political situation is so crazy. And I was like, can I really make a difference being this little voice and say, hey, you individual show up like this in the world when we have politicians which, which give our environment away, which, you know, which are just doing this big impact stuff, right? But also like, well, how much of this is my sense of duty, which, you know, I feel we were raised very much with, with the sense of global and uh, duty and maybe a little bit of said guilt we were in, you know, embedded with uh, towards, oh, as Germans, we have done bad. And now we have to do also things to, to, um, Ah, now the word is missing, but basically saying to to clear our name or to you know make good for the sins of our forefathers or you know all of those things, and yeah. it's kind of ridiculous um, to say here I am over sixty and and you know I'm sitting there and going, did I even want to do that? You know, like yeah, uh, I can understand. You know what that. I mean. Yeah, I do. Yeah. And I think it is also a little bit, uh, I want to make a bigger curve here. I think uh, we women now, for the first time in, in, in history, more or less, can, can want something else than having a family. And when you had a family as you had, normally in, in time ago, you were dead in that, uh, you know. So now not having any more to take care for your children, you have a free time and can now think about what do you really want to do? Because as long as you are guided by the idea you want to have a relationship, you want to have children, you normally don't have space for, for your own interests. And then coming back to the education system, our education system was quite broad. You had to learn from everything something. But I remember you uh, skating and stuff like this, and maybe me singing. It would never have been um, allowed, let's say, to study music for me. Because, you know, I want to say that our, what we maybe have had, could have developed as real passions, was not the right thing to do. So we, we well, were not... I we were not I, encouraged to do it. Yeah, I, I, I very much believe that in many ways. You know, I said, like I said, our parents did the best what they could. But I feel said, you know, as a child, maybe a little bit my personality or what was really more where I'm passionate about was not looked upon as a desirable thing. Exactly. Know? And so that it yeah. is difficult to develop a passion which would be really uh, leading your life. You try to do something which is, I, I studied mathematics and physics at the beginning because I wanted to become like a man. I wanted to have a, a possibility uh, like a man because I thought a woman is, you know, uh, our father said, yeah, you can be a teacher. And then when you come back after children, it's easy to come in. But I, I heard a sort of a, a dismissal of, of, uh, of a woman and the possibilities they have. So I always thought, when, if I could become a teacher, then at least a sort of masculine uh, topic, you know, to, to, to rebel against the, the verdict that you as a woman have limited uh, chances. I think today it's 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 different, you know? but then it but was you know still... it's it's a glass ceiling still exists, and I think it it is different for like you know my daughter's generation, but mm -hmm. it has almost gone the other way because now women have to do it all. They have to be mothers and they have to be full in the workforce. You know, I mean, Onika works all the time. You know, mm -hmm. she has a good income, she has a good position, but uh, she is working a lot, you know. So, it, like, 
the women's movement has certainly done a lot to open doors and so forth, but I feel we have kicked ourselves in the butt by, by basically saying we have to be like men and better now instead of saying we are women, we are different, and whatever it is we are doing is equally important as whatever it is you are doing, and let's work together. You know, we haven't come to that point yet. And no, I think... I think we should have an extra an extra talk about that because there is a lot to say about it. How we increase the masculine crazy energy instead of uh, finding our feminine energy and and going for that. Uh, let's let's go back to to to, to the education. I, I would love to talk about that another time. Yeah, we will. Really we will. I mean, we're already at it for an hour. We probably need to to stop soon. Yeah. Stop soon. Yeah. And, you know, and there is a lot to be said about school, so we can always keep going back to it. But we, uh, tell me we, what you had on your mind, what you wanted to. No, I wanted to explain a little bit the school system as it was then. Mm -hmm. And you were in the music, uh, more uh, artistic school, then I was more in the humanistic school. Then there were two schools for, one was only for boys and one was only for, ch for, 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 for girls. Children. <laughs> yeah, for children. yeah, that's a Freudian lapsus. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, we, it was seen like this, like uh, uh, girls, ha, 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 you know? So yeah. while the boys' school was serious, they did science and um, that'll do. Uh, you remember our brothers had a teacher it, who instead of saying that will do, he always said that'll do. And so his name was that'll do. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> So these yeah. four secondary schools were there, and we normally went there up to 19, more or less. We had 13 years of school. I yeah. came in later in school. You, you could go with six completed or almost seven. I was almost seven. And then you went to university, and the, the boys had to go to, to military, you know. We, yeah. we girls, we didn't have to. And we still don't have to, and they don't have to either anymore. But then it was just normal, you know. Well, do, is there no obligatory? I saw it. Not yet. Then it was not really yet. Uh, Hina went, uh, and no, 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 I know, but I saw boys still had to go. Only now they can choose between doing military or social. Service. Then later they could, but not yeah. at that time. Rolf but I mean, even today in Germany, boys still have to fulfill a service. I'm pretty oh, sure. Really? Yeah, I'm not sure. yeah, I think it's a good idea. It would be also a good idea for girls, for everybody, to a sort of service to, to, to know how, how it is, you know, instead of being so egocentric all the time. Anyway, that's also different, a different topic. Yeah, and uh, later on, there were uh, these, um, these trials with the Gesamtschule, a school where everybody uh, comes together. Because we had this gymnasium, we had the primary school, and we had the middle school. So the primary school, after four years, you went into, uh, into the gymnasium. And if you were not good enough, because you had to do an exam for the book, I, I remember it was... <laughs> yeah. Uh, then you stayed in the, in the primary school. After other two years, you could go to the middle school. And I think your school started also after six years only, no? I don't so the C, the C grade was, yeah. uh, was starting there. And yeah. I actually had started at the gymnasium. Yeah, it's Mexico. true. You went over and then. And then I went over there kind of to start over again because I yeah. was struggling there. Yeah. So uh, who was left the last two years, seven and eight years in the primary school was commonly considered like a bit stupid because they don't make it for no, other schools. No, I think they, they, there is also, there was a lot of socioeconomic uh, things behind it, right? Because, sure, sure. So but it was a, a class-wise, you were... It was, I, I think it was more of a class. Yeah expression of a class systems and of yeah. an intelligence. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I yeah. say. But, yeah. but you, you mix these things up, you know, that's not a real good distinction. So, uh, and then cl class system, there was not a real good awareness about that, that you, uh, uh, it's not really true because Wolfgang's, um, he had a classmate, you no, know, and he came as a low uh, social class, and he succeeded to go into the gymnasium, but he was even, you know, came later. 
So the but school you know, system. When you when you changed. think about it, like our father was an example of a code switcher. Not I don't want to say code switcher, but a, a class jumper, because mm -hmm. he came from, you know, a, a low income, a, you know, blue collar worker type of a household, mm -hmm. and he ended up being able to go to gymnasium and do that. And so mm -hmm. he had a mentor in a teacher or something. I don't know. I think we talked a little bit about it. And it's really, to me, that is history I'm not also clear about. But I know that there were people where they needed the kids to go to work when they were like after their I think uh, apprenticeship started in the old days with like 14 or 15. Maximum, yeah. Could mm -hmm. not afford to feed another mouse of the income mm -hmm. they had, you know? Yeah, so the yeah. kid was expected to, to go. And I think in our time, it was harder to transcend it. And later it has become more that you could go. And I think we have mentioned that if you don't have the abitur, which was... Um, uh, the final of the 13 years of school mm -hmm. going to gymnasium, you couldn't go to university. So you needed mm -hmm. this degree to go to university. So right there, it basically at the age of 10, it was decided what your future life is going to look like. If you can go and become a teacher, become you know a doctor, become whatever, or if you would become like a white color worker, you know, like engineering was a little bit different. That would, you know, that wasn't university, that was Fachhochschule, right? Yeah. You could and, go with a, a or, different degree, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> or if you would end up in a, in a blue color type of position. So that was decided very early on. And I think the system has changed now. Yeah. <clears throat> That's what yeah. I was about to talk about with this yeah. Gesamtschule where everybody went in the same school and then they offered their different, how do you say, strings of education and they were interchangeable. You could go from one more easily to the other. Uh, um, in, that, but it was after my time when I was already out of school. Yeah, I don't, I'm not familiar with what, yeah. what happened to you, sir. I but just then, know it's, Yes, that it changed like from number grades. Like when we grew up, we had one, two, three, four, five, six. One was the best, six was you failed. <laughs> totally, totally. Yeah. <laughs> <That was sin. laughs> yeah, yeah. But you could uh, afterwards, and many people did that when they were left out, they then did evening school and do. Uh, uh, um, they got the maturity and also when you were a handicraftsman like I don't know um, uh, a plumber uh, and wanted to become a, uh, teach other plumbers you had to become a master and for the master you had to have a high degree of schooling so many of these people went to school uh, later on in their adult life for to to get a master betrieb, meister betrieb, no, for to have yeah, a, but, but it's an a, enterprise. But that was a different, you know, that had, didn't have to do with like the school system. Like no, but it is a different school. school system and is, it was requested for, to, you could rely on, on enterprises which had a master uh, on, on top that they were good. And that's what my big uh, desperation was when I came to Italy, because in Italy, everybody can invent that they are, I don't know, a plumber, uh, whatever they are, and then they yeah, exactly. come and have no idea, you know. And I was so used from Germany that the people know what they do. I don't know how it is now. But... Well, and, and that's, you know, I mean, that definitely was another part of the schooling system said, when you left like our uh, primary school after eight and then later nine years, it wasn't just like, oh, now you get a job. I mean, there probably were some factory jobs where, where you could just go and get a job, but you would start an apprenticeship and yeah. you would learn to be, let's say, a baker from the bottom up, you know? Yeah. And, and then like you, you said, the next step was to be a gazelle, a journeyman, and and the name journeyman really is that people used to go and work all over the world and, you know, get more experience in their trade, experience other work situation and so forth. And then during the time of apprenticeship, you also had to go to 
a schooling which was specific to your profession. You know, I think like you would go like once a week or I later did start an apprenticeship where uh, it wasn't such a common profession. I was doing pottery. And so people from all over the state, I think, went to the school for like a two week period or whatever. So you would learn, you know, further. And then like you say, as a master had to do even more schooling and they became the teacher basically of the apprentices, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know in the States right now, there are a lot of people which are calling for that because college was really pushed on people and college here costs a lot of money. So a lot of people come out of the education system being heavily indebted, like a hundred thousand and more. And then jobs and really don't have the hands on training to do a lot of jobs. So, I mean, there's a lot uh, of good to be said for the system in a sense that only because you didn't go to university doesn't mean that you couldn't have a very good and established career and job, you know? Yeah, sure. So uh, <clears throat> It was only a different realm, no? The university is more academic and then you have a little bit more your head and your nose up. <laughs> Uh, and I, I think also <clears throat> that our family was a little bit snobbish to, mm. to be, you know, Maybe. truthful. And I think part of it was that our father came from a different environment, you know. So for him, he, he had this um, idea by, you know, I mean, he had worked himself up. He was also very, very much political and wanting to to help people and have equality, you know? And mm -hmm. our mom came from a much higher society position. So maybe she had to hold her nose up a little bit higher to, to yeah. deal with, you know, now suddenly being, you know, a cook and cleaner and washing maid and all of that. So I don't know. But there's definitely a certain amount of, I don't want to say... I always felt like in our family was uh, snobbish about education. Like, mm -hmm. you know, not necessarily about higher monetary status because we didn't have that necessarily, but said being educated and knowledgeable was what you yeah. had to, yeah. to be. Yeah. And that for you was the problem because you didn't, uh, in German. you didn't satisfy the expectations of, our parents at school, no? Like Wolfgang, no, uh, like, no, like I, you know. Yeah, I was definitely, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very pragmatic, I'm very practical, and I'm also very good for the most part with school oh, yeah. things with my hands. Yeah, you know? really. <laughs> and I think, but I, you know, I excelled in subjects I liked. I, you know, in German, I always had ones and so forth. And I probably would have made a really good homeschooler, you know, like an interest driven education, because what I found during my homeschooling years said, kids will learn everything if it, if it is something they find a purpose for. You know, even so, they might not like mass as mass in itself, but let's say they want to build something and they need to learn measurements, they need to learn angle, you know, basically that's ge geometry. They, they need to learn budgeting to see how much money they need, you know, and, and all of that stuff. They will learn all of that without even knowing they're learning mass, you know, because they're interested in this subject. And so they are learning everything around. And I think that's mm -hmm. more how my mind was working. And also, um, yeah, I mean. That's like you know, Rudolf Steiner Schule, no? Uh, yeah, Montessori. Yeah. And I, I would have been a good Waldorf kid. Yeah, you know? Waldorf, that, yeah. that would have been, yeah. would have been like a good place for me to yeah. be. And yeah. I, and also, you know, being younger, I mean, and I think I'm also have more of a literal um, understanding of things. Like if say if you say to me it's blue, I believe you it's blue, even so you might show me some green. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like you know what I mean? I mean, I 
I believe what people are saying and our brothers would always talk about how you go to gymnasium to make fun of teachers. And I thought that was my job, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I mean, um, and truthfully, I, I have never had a diagnosis or anything like that, but I believe that I might be slightly dyslexic or have some, something like that going on. Because, uh, and, and it seems to be shifting because there are days where I cannot spell for beans. Like, mm. and I don't even know where to look in the dictionary to figure out how to spell that word, right? Which is, you know, now it said we have also help on the computer is fantastic, you know? But in other days where it's just fine, but it's something, it has something to do with my brain, like taking things in differently. And I do remember having been a terrible speller, uh, at least for German standards. And there were the standards that if you don't know how to spell, you're dumb, yeah, you know. Dumb. And I, I kind of took that in a lot as, as a feedback who, about who I am, you know, early on, like when I was seven, when I was eight. And, and it's kind of like freeing when I came to the States. A lot of people don't know how to spell. You know, yeah, like not find, at all. <laughs> I find it sort of funny that you are now a writer, no? <laughs> well, I was writing a lot in, in yeah. German. I mean, that was a big thing. And I was doing well in, in writing. Uh, and that has very little to do with spelling. So mm -hmm. If somebody yeah. gives you a dictation, it could also be my ears that I hear things differently, you know, because that was, was a thing. And, um, but it's, uh, it's very much an imprinting, which has definitely been a hindrance mm -hmm. and it has nothing to do with my state of intelligence or abilities or whatever. It was just that this one thing was giving so much significance, which very well might have had to do with, with, you know, like how my brain, um, functions and, you know, now we know a lot. There are some highly intelligent people which even finish college, which don't know how to read because they have dyslexia, which never got, uh, you know, um, the yeah diagnosed type of uh, In my uh, class, the both classes I mm -hmm. was in, there were three people on the ladder. Now we have the, the gymnasium festa, the gymnasium, right, the right. combination of our founder, Casimir. And the one who was on the top, uh, he never succeeded to finish university, and I don't know what happened out of him. So, and he was considered the best. He did everything perfect, you know, in school. And later, he was obviously not able to, 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 to live, let's say, in many ways, you know, even his life. I heard uh, only vague stories, but that he didn't make a career and anything remarkable in, in his life, what everybody expected him to become, I don't know what, a professor or something, you know. So it doesn't mean when you are super good at school that you are well prepared for life. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I mean, that one is very clear. So that does mean <clears throat> it's the same thing. Yeah. And then again, he might have had a very successful life in his own ways, you know, maybe yeah. he was a successful No, I, I have heard Anna. that he had a, a lot of problems, but I don't know. Anyway, uh, I instead, just to finish it, uh, this course, I think we should really stop it soon. Yeah. I instead was very interested in more uh, theoretical stuff, you know, and more uh, abstract stuff. And it's still, it's, I often am still attracted, but I have come down to earth. But I remember, I think I said it before, remember um, seeing you, how you were able to saw and to knit under the school bench. And I couldn't even do that. The same thing, uh, putting all my attention on it. And I thought, oh, that's just, I, I can't do it. It looks so easy when I look, uh, when I saw you doing it, you know, but it was absolutely not what I could do. I was more interested in, let's say, in an analytics, in, in being, uh, analyze the things. I have learned to come down to earth uh, quite a bit, but... That's so you should be on Steam, then that would come easy to you all said. <laughs> what did you say? Oh, I, you know, like I'm, I'm really involved with the steam stuff. And what is that? 
I signed you up for it. The steam it. So um, I steam it. Yeah. Technology. Okay. No, I, I have a hua, something of that. I don't want. Now I'm not so in theory anymore, you know, but I was attracted for a long time and that was my way. But I, for me, singing then also professionally was the way out of that because otherwise I would have got stuck in this mind fuck. Mm. <laughs> sort of. Uh, but it's still sometimes attracting me doing analysis of stuff or communication patterns. And so that's, it's interesting to me. So we, we are oh. different and that's good. So absolutely. I think absolutely. we, we stopped for today and I find it really, really good that we in our age now come together and talk about things which we never talked about. And I hope if somebody comes up here, up to here and listen, that they get inspired to do something like that too with their yeah, I mean, us. Yeah, I'm I feel like you know, there's for one, it's like we all remember different, and for two, it's you know, I always feel sad that our family seemed like close when we were little. Like I have like memories of us doing things together, like, mm -hmm. you know, doing all this crafts for Christmas and just having magical moments like that. And then we just completely went, you yeah. know, yeah. and so in a, in a sense, it's kind of sad. And so time to talk. Anyways, okay. Good. Good. Let's Good. say goodbye See you for next today. time. <laughs>